Let's make a traditional British dessert, the Cherry Bakewell. Hey bakers, it's Angela from Bake Angel and we're back today with another tart recipe. And this time we're gonna make a gluten-free and a dairy-free Cherry Bakewell, which is one of my favorites from when I was growing up in the UK. Now you can see that we've started with going ahead and making the short crust pastry for this tart. There are quite a few elements that we're gonna learn along the way. So grab yourself a cup of tea so you can watch along. And as I said, we've started with the short crust pastry, which actually has a gluten-free base. But if you're not gluten-free, you could absolutely swap out the ingredients for regular flour instead. All of the other ingredients would remain the same. Now you're gonna mix those ingredients together until it forms a breadcrumb like consistency then we're gonna add a few more things some icing sugar and also one beaten egg to it as well and that's just gonna bring everything together to ensure that our short crust pastry tastes good and has a real nice melt in the mouth texture to it as well now as always you'll be able to find the link for the printable recipe on my website in the description below so make sure you do check that out let's give that a final mix together and you can see really quickly that it does start to combine together into a nice workable mixture and that looks great we're just going to speed up the mixer so we can get the rest of that pastry off of there scrape down our bowl with a spatula and then we're ready to turn it out onto our surface and actually start rolling it out now the recipe for the short crust pastry will actually give you enough to make five mini tartlet cases here and as you can see i've just added a little bit of my gluten-free flour to my work surface and that's just to make sure that it doesn't stick to it at all and it's going to help combine everything together as we give it a quick knead on the surface you could make this in a stand mixer as well if you wanted to but i find it's so quick that it is actually easier to use a hand mixer so now that we've got that rolled up into a nice workable ball, what we're actually going to do is portion it out into smaller pieces. Now each of these is about 95 grams each. You could weigh it if you wanted to or you could simply eyeball it. And then you just want to hold your mini tart case over it so you can roughly check the size. You want to make sure that it is actually slightly bigger than the tart case because we want this to go up the sides of our tart as well. With the cherry baker, which originates from the UK, the pastry base does actually go up the sides for that. With a more traditional bakewell tart, you would just have a layer on the bottom instead. So as you can see now, I've just gone around, I've trimmed off the excess pastry using a sharp knife. You can roll that up and pop it back with the rest of the pastry to re-roll. And then just pop some holes in the bottom which will actually help distribute the heat when we're ready to bake it. Now before we bake it, here's a really important stage that you don't want to miss out on whenever you make pastry, and that's called blind baking. So I've just popped all of my pastry cases on a tray for now, and we're actually gonna make a circle of parchment paper just to line that so that we can add our baking beads to it. Now you can see the quick method that I used here just to work out the rough size of that parchment paper. It does need to overhang slightly as well so that you can remove it a lot easier when we need to take those baking beads out. And then it's as simple as popping it in the middle of the tart case and adding your baking beads to it. Now you should be able to find these on Amazon. I do have a link in the description below if you are having trouble finding them elsewhere or other baking supply stores should sell them as well. And they're essentially ceramic beads that will just help with the heat when you are baking off your pastry. So we're gonna pop all four of these onto our baking tray into the oven for 10 minutes at 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're carefully gonna take that parchment paper out. See that that was easier to do because we have that overhang of the parchment paper as well. Pop the baking beads into another bowl. And just remember that they are obviously still hot at this stage, so take care when you do that. I find it's handy to have everything set up ready so you're not looking for somewhere to put them. 
And there we go, you can see the bottom of the base, so that center is not quite cooked off. So we're just gonna pop it back in the oven for five minutes. And then once they're done, they look like this. So you can see there's no roll spots at all now on our pastry cases, and they will need to sit and cool off whilst we go ahead and we make our fillings for the tart. So next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make my favorite part of a cherry bakel and that's the frangipan filling. We've started by adding some sugar and some plant-based butter as well to a bowl. Just add in the final bits that were stuck in my little butter container there. And then I'm using my hand mixer again to start to combine everything together. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a gluten-free and also a dairy-free recipe as well. If you need to adjust any of the ingredients to suit your dietary requirements, you can find the full substitution information in the recipe on my website at bakeangel.com. Now we're adding two eggs and also half a teaspoon of almond extract as well, which is gonna give it that amazing almond flavor that I really love in frangipan. Then we're gonna mix it all together and we can start to add it to our butter and sugar. Now frangipan is essentially like a sponge mix that is gonna rise a little bit when we put it into our pastry cases. And as I said, it has a really nice flavor to it as well. It is nice and light and fluffy and just perfectly complements all of the other elements in this tart as well. Let's add the final bits of our egg and almond extract mix to this. Give it all another quick stir up as well. And whilst I have sped this up, this didn't actually take that long to make. So one of the other important ingredients is our almond flour. Again, that's gonna help with the texture and the taste as well. It's ground almonds or almond flour, whichever you can find locally, it's the same thing. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stir that in as well. And that's our frangipan done. So now we're gonna start building our tarts and I'm gonna add some jam to the base of that. Now, traditionally you would have either raspberry jam or strawberry jam, but honestly, whatever flavor of jam you prefer would complement the frangipan really well. You wanna add about a generous teaspoon of jam to the base of each case. And as you can see here, I'm just spreading it out with that spoon to make sure that it does cover all of that base. And there we go, let's get that fourth one done. I really love the raspberry jam with this because it does give that nice tartness to the Bakewell tart as well, which is just one of my favorite memories from desserts that I used to eat in the UK. And now our final thing is to go ahead and add the frangipan. So this frangipan recipe will give you enough for more than four tarts. And I honestly think you will probably wanna make more with the leftover frangipan because this tart is so good. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever heard of a cherry bakewell and if you've ever tried one as well. I'd love to know what you think of them. So those are gonna go back in our oven for 25 minutes at 340 degrees Fahrenheit and look how gorgeous they look when they're done. The top is nice and firm and smells gorgeous as well. We're gonna leave it cool completely. Once they are cooled off, we can remove them from the tart cases. Let's have a look at the bottom as well. You can see there's no sign of soggy bottoms at all because we blind baked them earlier. So that's definitely a step that you do not want to miss with this recipe. I'm just going to take all four of them out of their cases and then we're going to go ahead and make the almond icing for it. Now, this is the thing that really distinguishes a cherry bakewell from a bakewell tart, because all cherry bakewells have a little bit of icing on top and a glacé cherry as well. So you just wanna mix together some icing sugar, water, and a little bit of your almond extract again. And we're looking for a slightly thicker pouring consistency. Essentially what it needs to do is not run down the sides of the tarts once we add it to it. So what I suggest is start with less water than you think you need and add little by little until you get the right consistency. And I actually like to use a little spray bottle for that because that ensures I'm not gonna add too much water because of course you can't take it away. You'd have to add more ice and sugar if it went a little bit too thin. 
So finally, we're just gonna take a couple of glacé cherries, cut them in half. You want half for each of your tarts. And then we're gonna pop a little bit of our icing in the center. You can see here that it doesn't run at all. We've got that perfect consistency for it where it's spreadable, slightly pourable, and easy to move around as well without it rolling anywhere down the sides of the tart. And then, unfortunately, my camera didn't record this last bit, but make sure you don't forget to add your cherry on top of it. And there we go, our Bakewell tart is done. It's ready to eat straight away, and I do recommend you eat them straight away because they are so good, you don't wanna to wait to try these. So I'm just gonna cut it in half to show you what it looks like. You've got that great ratio of pastry to jam and frangipan, and of course that icing on top as well, which just finishes it off perfectly. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this recipe and also if you're gonna have a go at making it. I'm just gonna have a quick bite of one of these to see what it's like. They are amazing. Really good for something like afternoon tea or a nice little tea party as well. And there we go, that's our cherry bakewells done. Don't forget to check out these other baking videos on my channel and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.